Hi, welcome back to our third video in the cognitive approach. This is about the second model of memory that you need to know for your examination and this model is called the level of processing model. It's a very different type of model than the multi-store model we looked at last time. It's from the cognitive approach this looks at the internal processing of the brain and regards the mind as an information handling device. Sometimes we use the computer to provide an analogy and allow us to explore models for processes such as memory. The highlighted bits show where you can tick it off on your checklist. I'd just like to emphasize that too many people get Tulving and Craig study and Lockhart and Crate's theory mixed up. Make sure that you're aware of the difference between the two and that the theory came first. Remember Atkinson and Schifrin's model? This model, although a good jumping off point, has been criticised for being too linear, too simplified, looking at unitary storage when we know that even long term memory can be split into episodic and procedural. Lockhart and Craig decided it was wrong. They went for a model that looked at processes rather than stores. They denied that storage was anywhere was important at all. Another point is that for them memory is just a byproduct of other processes. It's incidental. For Lockhart and Craig, the strength of a memory trace depends what processing you've done with it. So, the key idea is that there's not really any structures in memory. There's no short-term memory, no long-term memory, no difference between them at all. And the deeper something is processed, the better it will remember be remembered. If you think about a pool of water, You've got shallow and deep and intermediate in between the two. Sadly, Lockhart and Craig did not talk about what deep processing was. So it does make it something of a circular argument. Their idea is often criticised for being a description rather than an explanation. So this is the levels of processing framework in a nutshell. At the bottom, you've got structural processing. This is all about how something looks. If it's to do with words, you could be asking if it's written in capital letters or if it's black or white. This leaves only a very weak memory trace. Then you've got an intermediate level of processing. This could be phonological. This is how things sound. So you could be asking, does the word rhyme with, so rat, cat and hat all rhyme? This leaves an intermediate memory trace. The deepest level of processing is semantic. This is looking at things for meaning. So you could be asking, does the word fit in this sentence? Is the word the same meaning as this word? Such semantic processing leaves the strongest memory trace. So we call structural processing the shallowest processing and semantic processing the deepest processing. You could probably expect that semantic processing would take longer than structural processing. So in 1975, Craig and Tulving decided to test out the levels of processing framework. First of all, they got six, um, 24 participants. They presented them with 60 words via a tachistoscope. Each word was presented for 200 milliseconds. This was the day before PowerPoint. The tachistoscope was the only way of making sure that the words were presented for an exact amount of time. This is really good 
because it reduces the extraneous variables. If you've got a set of words where one word was presented for one and a half seconds and another word was presented for two and a half seconds, that might affect the results. So by being precise and using the tachistoscope, making sure all the words were presented for 200 milliseconds, it reduced those variables. After each word, participants were asked one of four questions. Now participants did not know this was going to be a test of memory. So at the end of the, the uh, presentation, they were quite surprised to be given a recognition list. The recognition, recognition list consisted of 180 words. This was 60 words that they'd been presented with and 120 novel ones. Words that had been presented semantically were best remembered. But hang on a minute. How many times in everyday life do we remember lists of words? Many people question the ecological validity of this experiment. In other words, just how applicable to everyday life is it? Well, as many of the participants were students, it might have been more applicable to them than the rest of the population. That's a question of population validity. But either way, it does seem to show that there's something going on when you semantically process words. But then Morris et al. did a, a similar experiment in 1977, and they found that words that had been processed phonetically were best remembered, which is exactly the opposite of what the levels of processing framework would predict. Participants did take longer to process the items semantically, so maybe the results are just down to a long processing time, not a different type of processing. Now it's really important that we remember that Lockhart and Craig made the levels of processing theory in 72, and Tulving and Craig tested it out in 1975. Remember which is the study and which is the theory, because the evil exam people like to test you. Craig and Tulving said this quote, if you think about how we talk about deep processing and shallow processing, again it sounds rather like a computer. In our lesson, you'll get a chance to practice an exam question that asks you to explain Craig and Tulving's findings using the uh, computer analogy.